Welcome back to Road to Abundance, guys. Today we have Juan with us. Uh, he's a professional in real estate, sales consultant, and he was doing a lot of cool stuff with real estate. I'll let you, uh, I'll let him introduce himself and tell a little bit more. I don't want to mess up his speech <laughs> of what he does because it's very particular and he's super successful at it. So, hey, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so I'm Juan Nicasio, aka Mr. ACQ on all socials. <laughs> Uh, my background is sales. I've been a real estate investor for going on nine years now in March. Um, I've transitioned in the last two years to helping other real estate investors throughout the entire country level up their sales conversion and uh, get a lot more profitable in their real estate career by knowing how to negotiate deals, how to analyze deals, uh, buy homes at really, really big discount. And so for the last two years, that's what I've been expanded to do and helping so many people. I, I believe we're over three or 400 people nationwide now that I have been able to impact uh, hosting different real estate events, uh, doing virtual coaching, in-house coaching locally here in South Florida where my business is based out of. So it's just been an um, amazing, amazing journey in my real estate career. That's amazing, man. Yeah. So we'll talk a little bit more about your current success, but I want to backtrack like sure. um, your life. Like how did you become successful? How long did it take? Like the goal in the podcast right now, I want to tell people like you're a super healthy guy. You do the right stuff. You had the right habit. Uh, you're a family man too, a beautiful yeah. wife for like 20 years, yeah. the kids, all that stuff. So yeah. knowing that 20 years with the wifey, meaning that <laughs> you started very young. So tell us about like, the growing up before it, all the success. Oh yeah, growing up was, was I'm gonna be honest with you, it was a challenge, man. I, I come from very, very humble beginnings. Um, I come from, uh, I was raised by, by my single mom, by a single mom uh, with two children. Mm -hmm. uh, not much education, she's an immigrant from the Dominican Republic and just you know came to the country for more opportunity, uh, give us an opportunity as, as children as much as they can with the education that they have, with their work ethic that they had. Uh, it was a struggle, man. I, I come from real, real humble beginnings. I mean, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, subsidized housing and living in maybe not the best places in the world, like, you know, ghetto type of area. In Florida? No, in New York City. Oh, shit. Born and raised <laughs> in New York City, in Brooklyn. And, you know, it was, uh, I'm an 80s baby. I was born in 84. So in that time, it was very, very drug infested. There's just so much uh, influence in the wrong, <laughs> right, in the wrong space. And so um, I wanted to make sure that because I knew my mom was working really, really hard uh, to raise us the right way, give us the best education that she can possibly afford. Obviously, it's public, uh, you know, schooling and things like that, but just trying her very best. I always wanted to stay disciplined and I knew something in me that I was going to be successful and that I was going to thrive to be somebody better. Uh, don't, I didn't know where I was going with it. I don't know where, <laughs> you know, in what specific field. Uh, I knew I loved cars. I knew I loved money. I knew I loved nicer things. And so I needed to get prepared for yeah. that. And I wanted to take care of my mom. That was my whole uh, ambition growing up. And so, you know, normal kid, I uh, stayed out of trouble. Thank God never got locked up, never got caught <laughs> doing anything crazy. I didn't do drugs or anything like that because I wanted to stay the course. You know, I wasn't like an A plus student, but you know, I got through. Did you I graduate? Through, yeah, did I graduated you, you high school. I went to college. Um, I did community college in uh, New York City in the Bronx, which is even <laughs> worse, <laughs> but it was a great school there. And then I came to Florida when I was 19 years old. I picked okay. up and I took 1500 bucks and I said, I'm buying a ticket <laughs> and I'm moving to Florida with $1,500. And I said, I'll make it happen. Were you with your girl back then? Yeah, so I met her when she was 15. I was 17 years old, so oh super God. duper young. <clears throat> yeah, and so, so she was striving too. She was trying to, you know, uh, yeah. come up with me. And, you know, we, she, was, she was already in college by the age of 17. So she got like advanced classes and we knew that we wanted to get out, you know? Yeah, yeah. man, that's crazy. Like. A lot of people, they see the good life, they see the good yeah. stuff, but it was like, first it was a risk. You went from New York to Florida with $1,500, like a nobody arriving I borrowed down. it. <laughs> yeah. I borrowed the 1500 by the way. <laughs> so what happened after, like what, what, Dude, what was going on there after? Well, you know, before I got to Florida, I was just always like a hustler. Like I, I figured out legal ways to make money fast. And so I, I figured, I'm like, well, Florida, Florida's uh, slower pace. 
So I'm going to bring my New York ambition and thrive <laughs> and hustle, and I'm going to crush it over there. Whatever it is, I'm, I'm going to do that. And I was just blessed, man. I, uh, I had family that lived uh, here in South Florida. They let me stay there for a few months while I uh, enrolled into college. So I enrolled into college, and then I also got a, a night job. So I was doing night work at a, wow. uh, at a timeshare. <clears throat> so... Would you say college is good? Did it help you or not really? Not really, dude. <laughs> put you in debt? <laughs> it put me in, in terrible debt. Um, don't go to college, Don't kid. go to college. No, no, don't go to college. I, I don't suggest it, but if you want to be a lawyer or a doctor, yeah, maybe you if, need yeah, it. Yeah, if you need it because it's like a massive requirement, without that you cannot do your field. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, cool. But other than that, like if you're just trying to figure yourself out, you want to get into business, you want to be an entrepreneur. You can't find anything on YouTube, um, mentors. Now you can do a... M M I uh, MIT and uh, R and other class like that, other university online, online, online on YouTube and shit and like technology has really allowed you know for yeah. for us to open up and and receive more than a PhD masters in that field that you want to be you want to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. I my daughter so, tells me now my older she's like I don't think I want to go to college I think she wants to be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and so I said yo that's totally cool I much rather spend twenty thirty fifty thousand dollars on mentors and sending her to Tony Robbins uh, yeah, seminars and things like much that. Better. Dude, Mastery not, in life baby exactly, not, not, not like... exactly like real <clears throat> deal application um, and I'd rather spend tuition on something like that, right? That's a great yeah. investment. Or investing in a business like 10,000 on a mentor, 10,000 on a business. Yeah. Like I think right. like a full degree in America is like up to 300,000 now. Like if you go to very expensive universities, so it's like, it's insane what you can do in life. Yeah, take, and, it, and it takes <clears> them. And so they don't get the practical things so that they can, okay, you get the masters in, in business. But when you come out, you come out in full debt and no application. So now you got to start from zero you know how long it's going to take you to pay the $300,000? Yeah, it's insane. It's at like 100000 is at least 10, 10 20 years. And then right. you have that debt that could slow you down for a mortgage and stuff. So, yes. Yeah. Um, so you started in real estate young or it, it came later, the real estate? Much later. So okay. I, I, uh, when, I, when I was doing the night job and going to college, I also was introduced to uh, health insurance, life insurance, and annuity products. And so I got my license. I failed like three times. <laughs> I studied so much. I was doing so much, right? Like, yeah. you know, there's, there's, when we'll probably talk about, you know, staying focused. Yeah. But I was doing so much that I tried to cram everything in. So it took me some time to, you know, pass the stupid test. It was like, you got to get a 70 something. And I was getting like a 68, 70. Oh my God. I'm like, I'm so right there. So anyway, I, um, that was my first like real professional sales position. Okay. I was doing like door knocking. Right, I had these old crazy leads from this crazy scammy uh, insurance company. <laughs> it's the only person, people that hired me, right? And so they were kind of teaching me the ways. I had to pay for all the courses. I had to pay for all the licenses and whatnot. Um, so I would take, you know, what I was making at the other place um, and investing it into getting the license. And then I was door knocking, trying to sell these crazy insurance policies. Um, that didn't work out, but it allowed me to. Um, have recruiting uh, recruiting companies find me because I had a license. So if you have a registered licensed okay. insurance guy, at that time uh, the there was a product called the Medicare Part D, which is uh, prescription drug plans for uh, people that are 65 and older. They're they're Medicare recipients and they needed a, a, a health plan to help them pay for their medical bills, right, or mm -hmm. their prescription. And so I got hired by a Fortune 500 company, Cigna. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but they're a large insurance brand. And that was like real heavy in a uh, boiler room type of situation where you got like a hundred people on the floor <laughs> pounding <laughs> the phones, man, oh, yeah. on, auto, on automatic. Like you didn't even have a chance to breathe. Like the, as soon as you logged in, it just dialed, call dialed, center, dialed, yeah. call center stuff. Oh, it, it was dialing for you. Yeah, it was dialing for me. So as soon as you logged in, you had to be ready. It was not like, oh, oh should God. I make the call? Shouldn't I make the call? Can I take a breath? No. It's like, good, though. It taught it you a lot. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, um, me being a bit of a hustler, I was, able to, I was always good at talking to people and making people feel pretty good and very respectful manner. And so I did very, very, very well from there. And then I started selling medic medical supplies. So I, I moved from the cost center floor to actually selling medical supplies to um, to, to Medicare and diabetic res, uh, recipients. For how long you did that? Ah, man, that was a span of about five years I did that, man. <clears throat> and what was the salary like? Dude, I would make like maybe 50 grand. 
A year? Yeah, I was for 20. A big hustle. I was 21, between 21 and like 23 years old. Uh, so 24, 50 grand back then, maybe like yeah. 80 right now or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I was, you know, at that, that was point, good. at that point, it was good for me, you know, uh, just because uh, I was never used to making that kind of money anyway. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm like consistent doing that. I didn't have any mentorship, I didn't have anybody that really can guide me, I didn't have any folks that were successful in my family. I couldn't call my uncle, I couldn't call my grandfather, I couldn't call no one that can yeah. say, hey, I'm making this money, what do I do with it? Like there was no one, yeah. you know what I mean? No, for sure, and, and I, you had a kid back then? You, no, I had, she got pregnant when she was 24, I was 25. So and just then that, it got uh, real. That really got real. I was like, oh my God, we're bringing another human into, <laughs> into so existence. <laughs> were you like into healthy habit back then or no? Like no, full dude. ball or room? No, not at all, dude. We would we would have whatever we wanted, when we wanted. It was then there was no routine. There was no and, and I think that hindered uh, some of the the delay and the success. It's just because my mind wasn't right. How was your mental health like? I mean, I just naturally I, I'm I was an okay, you know, I guess normal human or whatnot. Uh, but there was moments of a lot of depression, a lot of setbacks, a lot of um, I guess my expectations were here. But my behavior and, and my mental uh, capacity was very, very low. So it, it's like, uh, what do they say? They say in America here, they say, uh, I had champagne taste with beer money. <laughs> and so like my mentality was like that. It happens, a, that. Lot, yeah. it happens <laughs> a lot, right? But, you know, it was just, it took me a really long time. I, it, it was hard. Like, I, I, for whatever reason, I didn't attract the right people mm -hmm. with that kind of mindset so that I can be so I can see like, oh, well, these are habits. These are what people do. This is what people practice. We didn't have uh, YouTube that explosive and in my 20s, yeah. right? I didn't have other free resources. I'm, and I wasn't going to go to a library and start sitting there reading thousands of books. That was just not my discipline or my behavior. No one ever showed me anything like that. So if you're not in proximity or if you're not, uh, I guess, aware, then you're just going to do whatever you think is right, you know? That's cool. So after 25, then you, what did you do after? What was the transition between that up to the real estate stuff? So believe it or not, um, in from 24, 25 years old, I, um, I was hired by a gentleman who ran a, uh, an insurance brokerage. And so it was an independent brokerage. Uh, it's more selling real products, real insurance that really help people. Not the scamming, not the scamming stuff or anything. I'm done like with scamming that. people. Like scamming. Consciousness came in. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that was like my first real eye opening to entrepreneurship. This is this young man who is who has a brokerage in Fort Lauderdale and he He was uh, kind of your mentor. Yeah, he was he was like well, the first mentor. It was the first example of entrepreneurship. Right, and so I saw him. Uh, maybe he didn't have all the best habits in the world, or that type of stuff. But it was like my first eye opener. Like, oh, okay, well, you know, he Some was able to do, do that. Good, yeah. And, okay, and so what ended up happening? We worked for at least I think four years, built a lot of relationship. Went, met one of my best friends there. Unfortunately, you know, he passed uh, not too long ago. Uh, it's been like four or five years, but uh, that was kind of difficult. But in that transition, I learned about entrepreneurship. I opened up my own uh, brokerage and oh. grow a business of over 400 residual clients year in after insurance. year. And in insurance, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. cool. So that was my first entrepreneurship. Like, I have my own thing, my own business, right? You I were like, if this guy can do it, I, I can, can do, do it. it. Yeah. And then yeah. you, he, he kind of mentored you. Mm -hmm. So we can notice the importance of mentors. Yeah. So you went from little scammy thing, which is okay, 25, you don't really care about scamming people. Right. It's like, if other people are doing it, I'm doing it too, it's good, I need to eat. We, we all been there. Um, <laughs> if you've been a sales guy, you, you've scammed some you people scam some people. <laughs> uh, until you're like, fuck, I, I can't scam people for that long. Like six yeah, months, yeah. you start to have a conscious, like some people don't really care. Like a new guy that stayed in those business for uh, years, yeah. me after six months of scamming in one of my selling business, um, I was like, I can't do it. And I had a fight with the manager there. And I was like, bro, if you make me scam one more person, I punch you in the face. Yeah, like, like it, <laughs> it, it, it literally sets in. Like for, oh, me, bad. for me, I never grew up that way. Like, you know, I, I always wanted to bring honor to my family, um, yeah. to my mom. I never wanted to get locked up. It wasn't, thing, <laughs> I didn't want to like IRS or, you know, the, the federal, the feds to come knocking on my door. Like, hey, you're selling some, can 
So, mm. you know, luckily I left the scammy thing, you know, a really long time ago. Everything else that I did was pretty legit. It was yeah. just not like a scalable business. I was doing it for somebody else. It wasn't enriching me. I just had a regular salary with a little commission, you know, to keep me yeah. going. And when, when we say scammy, it, it's just guys, you're selling a product you don't believe in and yeah. you're over promising and you know, they're going to under deliver. So the thing you can over, you can over promise your product if it's your company, because you can over deliver if, right. if, if it comes to this, but uh, if you're selling for a company that you don't really believe in, that they're gonna, that they don't care about client, that's when we say you're being scammy because you're, you're doing your due diligence as a salesman to push a product, but you know in the back end they're gonna get scammed because the company won't treat them good. But right. there's way to be the same sales technique and make even more money for a company that you do believe in. Oh, absolutely. And um, so. You started your own brokerage. Uh, you were successful. Uh, how much were you making approximately back then? At that point, I was uh, already like in my late 20s. So at that point, I was already averaging between like 80 to 120 um, <clears throat> a thousand. year. Yeah, and so for me, I was like, man, I'm, I'm coming That's up. Balling. I'm, yeah, I'm <laughs> balling. I'm coming up, you know? <laughs> so yeah, balling. Uh, but I had a child so already, so. What was the, what was the, biggest shift in mindset or shift in yourself uh, because guys to make more money to to go from 50,000 to 100,000 to a million dollars it's all about your mind yeah. like the, the skills and stuff and yeah your network is your network of course this will come later but to scales in that range up to a million dollar I would say that it's your mindset yeah, and even true. later but then comes other factor but what was the biggest change for you like that you can compare like between the little uh, scam me 25 years old up to I have my own brokerage. I'm taking care of my client. Like what, what did really shift in your mind that you changed? Well, my morals were <laughs> like, number one, like I knew that I wanted to help. I really wanted to help people. I've always had a heart to help people in whatever it is that I do. And I know that I would become a millionaire helping people, adding value. Right. Um, I just didn't know a hundred percent if like the insurance thing was going to be that. Um, and there was a, a major change there, but uh, when you have your own business and then when you're taking care of another human being, it changes your perspective on everything, right? Like you just don't blow money. You just don't do that. You start <laughs> honestly like no being champagne. conscious, right? No more champagne, <laughs> right? <laughs> no more beer money to champagne. No. So it was like you had to be a little bit more disciplined. I'm taking care of another human being that yeah. I want her to have the best life, better life than I have. So, of course, naturally, you just start looking for better uh, either mentorships or, or better ways of doing things. Did you things. start investing in mentors at this point? Yeah. 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 So you were investing yeah. in exactly. mentors. Yeah. Yeah. And um, okay, that's awesome. So investing in mentors, taking care of yourself, being more disciplined because obviously you were kind of forced. But I mean, some people don't really take good care of their kid, but you, you wanted to provide. And also you were feeling better internally, not as depressed because now you, it was your company and you were feeling good about offering your product to right. people. And from that, what is the shift up to uh, doing the real estate? Yeah, the real estate happened because um, at this point, I got to a point in the career where there was a, a, uh, a government policy shift in insurance that really pretty much tumbled the, the, uh, the business almost overnight. Within a year, my business was over. Oh, due yeah? Due to the, just the government policy that was in place, they didn't allow me to make, I went from every every uh, um, every policy would make me about 12% of the premium that these people were paying mm -hmm. per month to one. To 1%? Wow. So imagine your business just going to nothing. I can't survive. So yeah. at which point um, I met a gentleman uh, through my church and he, he had a mastermind group that he would host every Saturday at like a local Dunkin Donuts. And so these are other entrepreneurs or people that, you know, that have you know, these businesses or they worked for corporate America, but they wanted more. They wanted the spiritual side. So a little mastermind. It was a small That's mastermind. Awesome. And so he's like, hey, man, um, you know, I, I understand. I express some of my struggles. And I, if I can share anything is mm -hmm. you want to share your struggles or your vulnerability um, because the universe, God, whatever you believe in is going to reward you and probably put the person or the people or the situation mm -hmm. that is going to get you out of there. But yeah. I feel like sometimes as men, people are, have so <clears throat> much ego yeah. and they will never express that they're hurting or that they're yeah. going through a, a tough 
patch. Yeah, and it's really important, two things I wanna notice there, guys, uh, mastermind, so it's really important to be in a group that either you wanna be in, in a group like of your industry, like him, it's in real estate, so you guys a group in real estate, I do group and I'm building a community just for men and, and it's to discuss and also, you want to ask good questions, so it's it's good to know your problem and where you're struggling. But mm -hmm. what you want to do also is ask the right question. And sometimes, when you're not in the right mental space, it's hard for you to ask those questions. So if he's coming to me instead of if he's complaining or being like, "Hey, so how can you make it better?" and then start asking the beneficial question, which is what a mentor can do: start right. telling you and asking you the right question that will help. Right. And so, you know, he extended his, you know, his knowledge because he was also in a, uh, a corporate job. He worked in logistics and he did real estate on the side. And so he would flip properties um, as like a side hustle. And he's like, hey, man, you can help me out and maybe we can, you know, we can develop from there. He's like, hey, how would you like to make like $5,000 a house? I was like, oh, that sounds very interesting. I don't know if you're telling the truth or not. I know you're a man of God, but <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna make $5,000 a, you know, a property. I didn't know anything about, uh, yes. about uh, real estate. Just shut down this thing. I should have shut it down before. So yeah, real estate wasn't, wasn't. So what was the, what was the 5,000? It was selling a house. So basically it was, flipping contracts so okay, I would call contract. a homeowner right yeah and I would say and I would ask him if they would consider selling the, the property and they would say yes and then we would get a price from them say you know uh, at that time a hundred thousand right and then I say oh man but we can only do about like 80 grand right and so they would say okay sure I'll take 80 grand I my job was now or his job was to go Sell find to 90 yeah but, to uh, 90 yeah. Or, or you know or more and so he had uh, a network of uh, investors that are looking for properties, right? So I'm just the middleman, just arbitraging, right? The contract from 90,000 or 80,000 to sell it at 90 or 100,000. <clears> and so, yeah, it took me like three months. He gave me this like old list. It was like, it li literally was this piece of paper full of numbers, uh, full of numbers, names, and an address. That's it. And I don't know anything about real estate well, other than, hey, how many bedrooms, bathroom, and that's it. And, you know, I, but I did have sales. So I'm just kind of like talking to them and they're giving me whatever, but it took me like three months to get my first deal. Um, and then that opened up my eyes, right? That you could do that kind of money. Oh, yeah. And then you started believing because belief, yeah. belief is the, is the key. Like if you don't believe that you can achieve, that's why you think and grow is just say whatever, whatever the mind, your mind can conceive, you can create. Mm -hmm. So having your first sale, you started to believe and also coming from a mentor that taught you and gave you like a book. So now you go, you do your first sale and boom, boom, eyes open, you see the cash. I do like three, four more, like back to back. Cause I, now I'm on the momentum, right? Yeah. There's a power in that stuff, right? Um, I was like, this is crazy. I'm going to become a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm balling. I'm balling. It's so crazy because you know, I would make whatever 80, 125,000, um, you know, a year in the insurance world that went down to like nothing to now like scrambling to make ends meet to now every single deal that I do is like five, ten thousand dollars I was like, no, I think I can do better than five to ten thousand dollars. So we start reinvesting into lead generation and things like that. Uh, just kind of figuring out, okay, uh, how do we get more people on our list? And so I do come from lead generation background also because when I had the brokerage, I had to pay for leads online, right? So that clients can call me and say, hey, I need help with insurance. I was like, I could mm -hmm. probably do this in real estate. So we start reinvesting and man, the business blows up, dude. And it, it was yours or it was his it, business? We, so I, what we did is we, I was treating it as my only source because I didn't have anything else that the business went down. He was working at the logistics company. I said, you need to quit your job by December of, I think it was like 2014 or something like that. And um, because we're gonna take this full force, right? And so we partnered and we were a partner in that business for many years, for like about five, almost six years. It, it stopped in 2020, but we were doing between an average of 70 to 80 properties a year, locally here in South Florida. And so we were turning properties and, and it wasn't no more of the $10,000 deals. Now it was like, 
20,000, 50,000, 100,000 a deal without us having to purchase these properties. So we were doing the yeah. same model. We so just, no money required technically because you, you don't need a mortgage in order to make an offer. You make an offer, your offer is approved and you have 30 day to, or mm -hmm. whatever yeah. you can, you, I guess you can put it in the contract that you have mm -hmm. 60 day and then you, you're like, I need to find someone to buy this contract yeah. for me and that's right. it. Because I would sell it to another investor, investor with cash. So the cash came from the investors, right? And so like that just opened up my mind to like, man, there's, first of all, there's no lack of money because all of these people kept coming to the table 50, 100, 200, 300, it didn't matter. I was just selling these properties and they were all come in cash. I'm like, wait a minute, right? Because you lot. don't know, right? You think that everybody works and everybody's gonna make 100,000, 150,000 and yeah, you, there's a couple millionaires here and there, but man, the, the streets were flooded with money, flooded with money. So uh, we started investing even heavier into more mentorship and so we would go and travel to uh, different masterminds and different coaching programs throughout the country, Arizona, in Tampa, in Texas, and we would for just- For real estate or- For real for estate. For also real for estate. mindset and stuff? Just More for real estate, but guess what? What ends up happening is that those people that are coaching and that are mentoring, it's always a common denominator. They're investing in their mental health. They're investing in, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of like, uh, yeah. more so than just the business itself, right? Yeah. So business mindset, personal mindset, spirituality, and stuff like that. So naturally, when you go to those places, you they get introduced you. to those yeah. type of things. And then it's, it branches out. Now you start you know, trying to figure out how you are gonna implement that, and that's really what changed everything for us. You know. So you went a little bit more for real estate, and then you got some spirituality, some health advice, because if you know any millionaire guys, yeah. they have a type of lifestyle, they have habits, uh, there was a thing about the morning routine and stuff. Everybody has kind of a little different tweak of whatever is important for them. Right. So that's what they prioritize first, if they have family or not, if they're single, whatever. And you need a spiritual routine, health routine, relationship, and then um, you were in relationship and all that yeah. stuff. So it keeps you like focused. That's one of the things we were talking at the beginning that um, at the beginning, when, when you're a young hustler, you hear that millionaire have a lot of stream of income and right. you're like, oh, I need to, to do a lot yeah. of things. Nah, nah, nah. Until you're a millionaire, you do one fucking thing. Oh yeah. And then, oh, yeah. then you hire a good accountant and a good money manager. Absolutely. And then you start diversifying and then you find guys like Juan and then you're like, okay, yo bro, I have 100,000, 200,000 cash. I want to make a move in real estate. Let's do this, let's do that. But until you have invested a lot in yourself and a lot in the business. Like I think in the last six years, I probably invested like 500,000 in myself, maybe more Huge. like just this year I put like so far 130,000, um, in the year just started, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, um, in myself and in self investment. So it's like mentor did change your life. Of then course. attending those seminar because it opens also your eyes first on a lot of thing and, and second that money is abundance it is and, and then you're like wow okay if if those guys can do it i'm as smart maybe i just don't have the right vehicle or right. maybe i'm not doing things the right way correct plus you start feeling good because um it's a whole different story when a lot of people talks around you and be like oh it's hard to make money and this and that versus if there's a bunch of millionaire on you and they're like yo i just made two million yesterday you're like two million the fuck? yes and then, and then you start considering like a hundred thousand, like it's pocket change. Right. And, and then when you go back to talking with, with people that make 60,000, they think you're bragging, but it's just that your internal speech change and, and you do really believe it. And because you believe it, you can manifest it yeah. in your life. It's so true, man. As simple as it is. It is. And, I, and, and your surrounding is everything. So if anyone's out there and you're like struggling or you uh, feel like, you, you reach the ceiling or whatever it is, there is honestly no ceiling. This world has an abundance of, we will never ever run out of money. You understand yeah, that? Yeah, that's like, for sure. There's no way in God's green earth that we, and if we do <laughs> run out of money, a new, a new we, we have a new yeah. source. And like now we're shifting to crypt, crypto. Crypto. Oof. And uh, the financial market is gonna crash. I don't know when, I don't know how, it's coming soon. I'm just, I'm just not specializing to it anymore. So I don't know where we're going with the crypto. I know it's coming. 
I took all my money out. I'm, I have some crypto in, uh, in a ledger, uh, in a safe, and I'm waiting. But I, right, right now, it's an uncertain market. But what I know is that no matter what happened, it's going to happen globally. So don't worry about it. And the change that's going to happen is going to happen for everyone at once. And Absolutely. the people that have money will keep having money. So those billionaires that are setting the tone for everyone, don't worry. If they crash something, they're already in the next they're thing. And, the next day, for and sure. uh, <laughs> you just want to be aware of what's coming and, and invest in mentor and then change your circle. And one key thing I can tell you guys is, and we both done it, is to invest in mentor. We're both coach and we both teach and we both invest a lot of money. So there's either groups, you can do the group based subscription that will elevate yourself, your right. peer, that's a, a few hundred dollars a month or whatever, or you can invest big, big time and really do an investment in yourself, five, 10, 20,000, whatever the mentor cost is. And this will drastically change oh, 100%, your mind. percent because now you're in a, in a surrounding of other people that have either the same struggle that you do and then the mentor is going to help unblock those limiting mm -hmm. beliefs or whatever it is that yeah. you know is blocking you from moving to the next level. And then you're in a group of people that are all thriving to get to that to, avenue, yeah. right? To get there. And, and often it's like, often we're really good at looking at other people. So let's right. say Juan has a problem and it's the very similar to me and I can't see it for myself. And then Juan is having a relationship problem and he's at a toxic relationship and that's blocking him from going to 200,000 to a million because right. if, if your brain is so struggling with energy and stuff with that relationship, you cannot expend that energy towards something else. And I'm in the same toxic relationship, but I can't really it for myself. I can't see it. And the mentor is coaching him and then I'm like, oh shit, fuck, I'm, do I'm doing yeah. the same. Yeah. And then it was so much easier to see him and then I can be like, yo, you know what, let's be buddy. You drop her, I drop mine, and then let's keep us accountable that we're not going back to our ex. And then it's just, you can start communicating with different member plus the mentor coaching. So, so those two combinations, because he's, he's spot on, the accountability is literally what sets the tone and allows you to really catapult to the next level is the accountability. So the mentorship mm -hmm. is absolutely amazing. Right, if you can get a mentor, yeah. you can pay for that. But then having somebody that you can help each other accountable, yeah. you have no idea how many of those people are now in my life. That <laughs> hey, have you done X, Y, and Z? Oh, hey, we talked about doing this type of marketing. Did you yeah. get started on that? Right, and it's like, oh shoot, I didn't do it. I'm yeah. gonna do it right now. Then <clears throat> yeah, yeah, come on. And, and so it pushes a you. mastermind group, mastermind group, or just another kind of like if I can call you, mm -hmm. Mike. Hey, listen, yeah. spiritually, Friends. I'm not yeah. doing so well, or whatever it is. I told I know you told me to do this in the morning <laughs> or to take a nap at 12 o'clock yeah. and like, you know, little tips. And then you can tell me, hey, I'm going to call you yeah. at, at, at uh, call it 1145. This is your alarm, right? <laughs> and then we help each other to, to get to that level. Exactly. So the mentorship and accountability <clears throat> is literally one of the best yeah. things that you can ever invest. So I would say like anybody whether you're not doing financially well today, right? Because that's another mindset thing. Yeah. Like don't don't use negative words like I'm broke, right? Or anything <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, your word is powerful. Yeah, that's why we call it powerful. spelling because it's a spell you're casting on yourself. Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, just say that, you know, your, your money's in escrow. <laughs> I like to say my money's in escrow. Like it's about to hit the account. But um, I would invest. I would take like a, a small portion every single time you get paid or you get some money so that you can allocate it for a specific event or a yeah. specific mentorship. Like that, it's not so hard when you see like a $5,000 mentorship program or a $1,000 <clears> mentorship yeah. pro program. You can just save you can up. E you can even take a loan. Like I took loan for mentorship because it's never like, don't, don't take a loan. Don't put anything on a credit card for traveling, cars and all that shit. But investing in yourself, it's never... A lot losing money right. like I never felt like I lost money investing in myself sometimes I learned lessons sometimes I learned that it was not for me sometimes but it was always good and no matter who you think you are you're never too good to have a coach the right. best athlete in the world have a coach the billionaire have coaching like yes. uh, Tony Robbins was just saying in the business mastery that I took that he's still coaching uh, Tudor which is a multi-billionaire wow. and he still paid Tony Robbins for three hour a year three million dollars so wow. No matter who you think you are, from um, normal level of income to multimillionaire, you need coaching yeah. and, and you need to invest. And there's no excuses of I don't have money because when I was broke, I was still finding money to invest if you really want. And this opened my eyes and those risks 
also led me to become the man that I am. So after going bankrupt, I took money from a friend. I was like, bro, I need that money. This coaching is 10,000. I'm missing 5,000 because I just went bankrupt. He loaned me the money. Two months later, it was already refounded and I had money in the bank because I started surrounding myself with other guys that paid 10,000 and we were like in a group and in a setting. So, and to this day, like it part of the 120,000, 130,000 I invested so far, I have a coach that I have a call with him every two weeks for accountability. Sometime, most of the time, if you don't pay, you don't pay attention. Right. So sometime for me or for, I don't know if you're like me, but if a friend tell me like, Hey, like, did you do that? Sometimes I'm like, ah, I don't really care. But if I'm paying someone to coach me, it's like, bro, did you do your homework? I'm like, fuck, I'm paying that yeah, guy. I'm like, paying, I, yeah. maybe I should fucking do it. Yeah, I, I, you know, that's probably one of the most painful things for humans <laughs> is paying for something and then not doing it, right? Like the only thing that you will never cancel is like maybe a $10 membership because it doesn't really hurt you. But yeah. if you're spending $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month, $3,000 a month, yeah. man, you're on those calls. You are doing the job. You're doing, you're and, but it helps you because... Dude, you invest 4K, right? Or a thousand or whatever, more. you're doing like you should be doing at least a minimum 3X of what you're already investing. Yeah. At least. So it pushes you, right? Mm-hmm. So I would say, you know, and a lot of people do it from a different space, which what it, what hinders them from really growing, they do it more from like a uh, just a uh, um, a limited space or the, a necessity. When you do things from like a necessity standpoint, Man, it takes so it takes so much out of you because now you're like struggling and pushing and pulling just to get through yeah. versus doing it from an abundant space and saying, hey, no, I'm going to invest in this because I know it's going to produce yeah. X, Y, and Z versus shit, I have to pay this thing because and I'm just going to scramble. It just comes from a, a different mm-hmm. space and it doesn't allow you to grow. Like it's the craziest yeah. thing in the world. So now I'm happy to pay for mentorship. I'm happy. Yeah. It's to, energy to exchange. Oh. It's like telling life that, hey, I'm ready for the next step. So here's money because I believe in abundance. So I'm not scared to invest that 10,000 because I know it's going to come back tenfold to me. Yes. But the thing is, if you're in a scarcity mindset and you're like, oh, I don't really want it. Should I do it or whatever? You're showing life that you're so attached to your money that you can't really do it. And I remember back then I had a friend that was like, you should burn a hundred dollar bill. I'm like, why would I do that? Like, I was broke. I'm like, oh, are you crazy, bro? Like, yeah, I need that money. And he's like, cause it was kind of like a way to tell me, to, to tell me that in terms of like, you shouldn't be attached to money. Like right. it's abundance and you don't necessarily need to burn it. Some people need to physically do something, but if you want, like, um, give it to charity yes 500 pick a charity and be like and and don't give an amount that you're comfortable with so if you're thinking about giving 100 give 200 200. if you're thinking about 200 give 500 it needs to be like oh i'm abundant like no problem because it's gonna unlock stuff in your mind like often when i'm like should i give money yeah if i'm asking the question i should so i gave 500 to charity last week and and yeah, sometimes I'm like, fuck, I, sh- I could have bought shit with that, but it's okay because it's giving. It's 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 like it's never waste. Like it's not abundance. It's yeah. gonna come back, and it comes back like stronger than what you've given. To be mm-hmm. honest with you, it's like a it's a real magical thing when you yeah. get into that space. So like for me, I don't even think about it. Whatever I receive, I already know that I have like a percentage that is gone. No matter what, I don't care. It's an emergency comes up or whatever. Like if you just stay disciplined to that, because it's also like a universal or godly spiritual thing to kind of test you whether you're doing it for your own self, um, uh, um, I guess, satisfaction, or are you doing it because you are abundant, because you believe, you honestly believe that this is the right thing to do or that this is going to create more abundance in your life, or are you doing it selfishly just so you can say, I donate it. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Like and, and, and I don't like now I'm talking about it, but I didn't really post. Uh, I, I didn't really. If you want to donate, donate because it's the right thing right. to do. You don't need to brag that you're doing it. It's like do it. When I donate, it's always because I feel right. I, I pick the charity I want because a lot mm-hmm. of them are scam. Uh, so if I believe that charity is doing good and, and, and affecting and, and my money will be really applied towards what, where it's right. going, I am happy to give. So definitely research, you know, what charities you're, you're donating to, obviously even try to get involved, maybe in a higher capacity than just 
the financials to make sure that whatever charity you're giving mm -hmm. to, they're doing what they're supposed to. Yeah. But at the same time, if you're donating with your heart, right? And with all of your um, just conviction that you believe in this, whether they misuse the money or not, it's like uh, all the time I get, uh, my wife, sometimes she's just like, oh, if you give them the money, the people in the street, if you give them the money, they're just gonna go buy drugs and whatever. But it's not about the drugs. It's not about what their habits are. It's, it's yeah. your heart and knowing that you've contributed and you hope, and you hope that they use it yeah. for good, <clears throat> And the charity that you're providing to, exactly. that they use it for good. But once it's gone from my account and once I've done what, my work mm -hmm. and my belief, what happens you after that, it, yeah. I let it go. Exactly. I let it go because the universe is, it has to deal with that person and their consequences that way. Yeah. With me, it's going to be a different story. It's not like, oh, you donated it in the wrong way, so I go, sorry, you can't be blessed. Like, yeah. what? <laughs> no, it doesn't exactly. make sense, you know? So, and, and recently, you also started to change your health habit, right? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. health habit, how all that even took you to another level? Like, because mentor, and then it's just adding more pillar and pillar and spirituality and meditation and all that stuff. You do all that. Yes. Yes. It's uh, it is a progression. Things are not going to happen overnight, but it's like uh, what I what I decided to do was say I want to be a better version the next day. I revisit what happened the day before. Mm -hmm. Sometimes nightly. Uh, I do a lot of journaling now. Journal. Journaling. That's amazing. That's been the number one. If you take anything from this. Uh, podcast is that journaling. the number one thing that has transformed more millionaires has been journaling. And so um, it took me a, t a long time to get into that <laughs> habit, but it's the most amazing habit. You have no idea the magic that comes from Especially for from guys, journaling. like we, we don't, I call it secretary work. That's right. why I didn't like <laughs> it before. Like, like, I'm not a secretary, <laughs> a fucking millionaire. Yeah. No, but um, that's why I released two journal, uh, the gratitude journal and the habit tracker, right. especially for, for daily tracking. Like my girl was really, really um, deep into that. And I was like, yeah. And the magic of writing, um, there's 10,000 um, nerves and stuff associated with you and your mind and, and writing. And there's so many involvement with your hands doing. It's not like typing on a computer. So for mm -hmm. journaling, do it manually. That's right. why I still created a journal and I still do it manually for that stuff because your hand is writing. It's super powerful. Yeah, I don't I don't type it and I don't speak into it. Yeah. I, everything is manual for me. Yeah, and that me doesn't too. matter. Sloppy handwriting, nice handwriting, just just doing the that habit. Yeah. You have no <clears throat> idea the incredible things that come to life. And some of it happens almost instant, which is which is like beyond me. Like I, I, I am yeah. so grateful. Cause you know, you, you, it's also people are like coincidence. It's never coincidence. It's there's coincidence happening over and over. And then you start to realize that it's not coincidence. Right. It's just life and the law of attraction and things are happening because it's a law of attraction because a law is a fact it's happening that you believe it or not the law of gravity is there that you think that you can walk on the roof and just right. keep walking gravity right. is going to take you back <laughs> so believe it or not it's working same with the law of attraction so that's why now just doing your journaling it's like clicking clicking so we'll backtrack a little bit all right um <clears throat> in my 20s complete disaster all i did was drink party <laughs> spend money made money hustle it was it was not sustainable i you know if i of course, if you had a magic wand and can go back, obviously I would practice the habits that I'm doing now then because, you know, we're here for a certain period of time. And the more that the, the, the sooner you, you begin start, those habits, yeah. the more success, the more health, the more happiness, abundance that you're going to have and you get to live out for a very, very long mm -hmm. time and not waste it. But at the same time, I feel it grateful. Taught you. It taught me and then now it teaches others because now yeah. I can talk to folks who knows who's watching this, right? You might be 15 years old and you're yeah. listening to this, right? And so we want to encourage people. Uh, and that's one of my biggest passions now is to create an impact more so than money because, yeah. uh, you know, I can have little, I've lived with nothing and I've lived with much. And to be quite honest with you, it doesn't really matter. It's the impact and the things that you're uh, putting out into this world that's going to leave the legacy. No one's yeah. going to remember that you have $5 billion in your bank account or if you had $100 in your bank account. Nobody's going to look at that in your obituary. Like, Let me oh, your daughter. My, my daughter <laughs> he left me with nothing. Yeah, <laughs> but, but the impact that you leave on the world, and the, the, that's why there's a lot of 
people that are older that mentor people because right. at one point they want to feel good and they want to leave an impact. They leave so something. Amazing. But yeah, I mean, I was really unhealthy. I was overweight. So believe it or not, I was, uh, I'm only chubby five. boy. <laughs> I was a chubby boy. I was like, I'm five, seven and a half on a good day when I wear these boots. Right, so I'm not that tall, and I was like 215, almost 220 pounds. That's insane. 220 yeah. pounds, roly poly, man. Yeah, that's fast. And <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't wake up early. I didn't meditate. I didn't do any of also it. Also, your mind, because your well, happy hormones yeah. come from the gut. So it's like, so now I guess, fast track to now, you're doing all the healthy stuff. It's also improve your business, because a lot of, of people are like, I don't need it. I don't need the six pack. You want more money? Right. Yeah. You want better relationship with your yeah. wife? Yeah. You gotta yeah. eat healthy. You need it. Yeah, yeah, you, you got to eat LT yeah. because the, yeah. it, it's going to impact Absolutely. your whole system. Absolutely. Um, that's amazing. So now you're, now you're doing that. You're mentoring people also in real estate. Yeah. Business is booming. Everything is good. Um, it's a lot more satisfying. Yeah, also now your relationship with your wife is amazing. Um, obviously, it had ups and downs, and, and it was probably related to mental health and how you feel inside. Absolutely. Now that you're fully secure as a man and you're like, I know I can provide and I know who I am and I'm, I'm healthy and I'm happy, I'm sure you show up 10 times better in the relationship. Oh, yeah, 10 times. Even as a father and stuff. And then I have, I have three young kids, right? Yeah. So they all need my attention. So I'm really blessed that now, believe it or not, um, I work less, make more, and get to spend time with my family every evening, right? I take them to soccer, I can pick them up, I can even mm. take them to school. It's like, it's a really powerful thing that, that has transitioned. And then, of course, with my wife, I have my alone time with her. I could take out a date. We went on a date the other day, right, with the wife. <laughs> and so um, it's, it, it, it just, when you're doing these habits and you see how much abundance there that is out there, everything gradually just starts to fall into place everything is a lot more healthier and much more at peace we try to stay away from all types of drama we've cut up relationships with other people that were toxic because even that affects relationship yeah. that environment affects the relationship yeah, sure. and so no thank god yeah it's been such an amazing process of you know <clears throat> all of it you know relationship with my wife the kids business and then in the impact of people as well which that's is awesome man. which is my biggest thing like that's my yeah that way makes you happy too and stuff super happy. um so one uh brought me a gift a book so that's amazing thank you yeah. brother talking about book um what's your top three you have three uh, books to yes, recommend absolutely so the the number one is the one thing by gary keller the one thing yeah okay essentialism is the second one what is it? Essentialism. Yes. Essentialism, yep. And so it's basically, I read those back to back. So I do the one thing and the essentialism uh, second. And then I would say, uh, because I'm in sales, I love, um, I love Chris Voss's uh, Never Split the Difference. Never Split the Difference? Yeah. Yeah, that one's a great one. Yeah, and that's just because I'm a sales guy. <laughs> <laughs> and the first two books are about like uh, personal development and stuff like that, man, yeah. mindset. Kind yes, of. mindset, um, and then staying hyper focused on one thing, right? The one thing that you are, let's Good. just say, your zone of genius, let's just yeah. say, staying hyper focused in that and seeing how that mm -hmm. right there will allow you to see massive success versus. You, you know, you mentioned uh, a successful millionaire has like seven different streams of income. So instead of doing a hundred different things and trying to multitask, which is a human made up thing, yeah. staying focused, how to stay focused in onto that one thing and be an yeah. expert and be obsessed with that one trait will exponentially help you to grow yeah. more so than trying to do everything in your life. Yeah. And for two reasons. So... The law of attraction, in order to manifest what you want in your life, guys, it's whatever you think most of the time. So let's say I'm building three businesses at the time. The law of attraction is dividing its power. You want to be a real estate mogul or you want to be a coach or you want to be a personal trainer? Like, what are you looking for? And then, and then your mind is going like that. So that's why when he says, focus on one thing. So let's say now I want to be... Um, I want to be a human potential coach. I want to help people to empower their life. I want to teach breath work, everything that's related to improving a human being. Now I have one vision where I'm going to take this brand. That's why I stopped 
only fan like that's why I stopped all the the social media stuff that I was doing now I'm only focused on to that one thing I'm putting all my thoughts day and night and I'm helping as many people as I can and the book I'm writing is linked to that everything I'm doing is linked to one goal right. that I can push and not only that it's also doing what you're good at so that's another really interesting thing so I'll share something Although I'm a great uh, real estate investor and I know how to analyze deals and I can put a whole transaction together from beginning to end and I know how to run uh, comp analysis and I know how to do all these type of things. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I really hated doing all the transactional stuff because there's a lot of moving pieces yeah. to, um, to a, a real estate transaction. You would think that, you know, oh, uh, real estate, yeah. just put the cash and you buy it. No, there's... There's so yeah, many there's people a involved. There's a, mu- a bunch of processes, documents that you have to do. And so although I was very successful at doing that, it wasn't making me 100% happy. Either right? fulfilled. Like, I wasn't yeah. fulfilled. And so I had to take a step back in that career. That's why the partnership ended in 2020 because it was just, I, already, I was already exhausted, man. I was yeah. just like, this is... Although this is great, we're doing these amount of deals. You were making a lot of money, but not not 100% where Man, you wanted I was, to be. I was so stressed. I worked, yeah. I worked 12, 13 hours every single day and just dealing with <clears throat> a lot of um, negative emotions from all the different parties and people fighting and attorneys and sellers and buyers. And it was so much. And I said, no, this cannot be it. Like, I, I want to be a millionaire for sure. Like, I want it, but it can't be this way. Not to the mm-hmm. expense of my health. Right, not to the expense of my relationship, because then now I argue with my wife over nothing, right? Because I'm just, I'm so yeah, like, so in your head, so already triggered. Mm-hmm. And I, I learned the same thing as you. It's like there's three type of of entrepreneur. If you if you have a business, there's the um, artist, which that's probably what you are. It's like a creative genius. Yep. You want to do your thing. You want to you want to move pieces, but you don't want to move them. You want to move them with your brain then there's the manager operator which people that love to do spreadsheet numbers and yes. all the technical stuff um which like it doesn't mean that you're not good i'm a genius in math i'm a, I'm a beast but i'll use it look present it to me i'll guide but then you go and you do it right. and the last thing is entrepreneur people that are 100 percent risk and only putting money and they want to do things us we have a the artists in us, we want to empower people, make an impact, do this, that. So we're not only focused on money. We want to make sure we provide fulfillment and other stuff. And I did the same. I was good at so many things, but I couldn't build a business higher because I hated a lot of pieces of it. So now I just hired a team today, actually. Yeah. I took three weeks to find the right team. And now I have a whole team that's going to move all the pieces that I don't want to do. And I feel like it's removing so much pressure i'm paying them it's it's costing me a lot of money but the thing is it's an investment that you'll 10 times later and and your business will grow because you you you'll be able to manifest because the the key is always feeling good if you're always feeling good you can manifest 10 times abundance yeah yeah so that's what happened i had to transition i and the book the one thing was what did it for me It, it allowed me to set myself back and say okay I understand you're really phenomenal at taking care of all of this because I am phenomenal at doing transactions. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm good at this stuff, man. But what happens is that all those pieces didn't make me happy. So I got to figure out what in this business, because it's, it's a great business. It's a business that's making many millionaires right now in, in, in forever. Real estate will always make millionaires. Where in this business do I fit? What is my one zone of genius right? That I can make a, a bigger impact because even just running my own operation, well, it's technically speaking, it's just my own operation to feed my own, you know, pockets. And I'm only impacting, pa- impacting the people that I'm directly in there, but there was so much more impact that I can do. So what I said is like, well, like the number one thing that I'm amazing at is sales and talking to homeowners and making them feel good and creating solutions that are win-wins for, for the company and also win-win for uh, the, the, you know, the investor, right? Yeah. So I said, you know what? That's what That's I'm going to do. do. And so I started helping other investors nationwide to learn that sales, uh, sales uh, skill System. set. And I successfully now I'm able to have all these salespeople even up around the world. I have people doing sales in Egypt. Uh, Philippines, cool. Central America, 
uh, South America and all throughout the United States, and they're learning my framework on my genius, and I'm more I'm doing an impact worldwide where I was just having a little impact here in Florida. You yeah. know what I mean? And you're and feeling happier hard, and making course. more money and working less. It's crazy. So it's crazy. Scarcity mindset. Yeah. You're like, ah, oh, I'm so good at so many things, but actually focusing mm -hmm. gave you so much more, more, more time, more freedom, more. more money, and then you can have millions and just relax and just enjoy them and, and just do what you want and then you can build out of that. That's amazing. And, and just other people chime back and they tell you, man, because of your program, I'm in this situation now. Like, I'm in a better situation. Yeah. I'm, you know, thank you so much for all that you've taught me. People that are in, like, another country that yeah, otherwise, that's awesome. they would have never had that kind of skill, right? Now mm -hmm. they can take, they're like, listen, uh, I may not last in this uh, particular company, but now because of the skills that you taught me, Anyone in the United States can can hire me. Yeah, so think about that. Like I'm changing people across the country. Yeah, that's amazing, bro. Right? And it feels good when people tell, come tell you that you yeah. help them. It's like, it's a good feeling. You know, you're doing something good. Yeah. You're like, wow, I'm like, I'm. It's cool. I'm not only changing my life. I'm changing. And it allows other you to people. do more, right? Yeah, it gives you that energy. motivate you, mm -hmm. momentum. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And um, what is your best uh, time management advice for an entrepreneur? Man, uh, uh, time blocking. Time blocking is everything. Time blocking is everything. It, it allows you to do so much. It, stays, it helps you to stay focused, especially if you're, like, if you're a very busy entrepreneur and you have a lot going on. For example, I currently manage about um, eight different uh, businesses within my business, right? So I have clients that always need me. So I give them a certain hour every, uh, every couple days for them to utilize my skills or you know need me as a consultant and I'm blocking that off after that I'm not dealing with them I, so I move it's time block day. you do two hour of sales call two hour of this one hour of this and, and then that's the only time that they have that's and, it. and then after this I'm off and even for even for personal things like even for family time I say okay nope it's five from five o'clock to 9 p.m. is family time right from 9 30 p.m. till 5 a.m. is sleep time from uh, five o'clock to six o'clock is gym time. <clears throat> and from six o'clock to seven o'clock is journal yeah. time. And that really has helped me to have a very organized and time managed space. <laughs> yeah. And then I don't allow other distractions. Like even for this right here, I blocked off uh, about three hours here and I put it on do not disturb. And so now I'm fully fo focused and immersed yeah. instead of my phone going off. Cause we, we, you know, humans, you get distracted. Yeah, 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 times, sure. right? And so now it allows me to stay hyper focused, which is the same thing from the one thing, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm super duper focused. I can give you all of my intention. I can yeah. give you all of me and be <clears throat> hyper productive mm -hmm. because I'm managing time. Because also your mind is free. You know that you're right. focused and there's the thing, it's the Parkinson law. It's whatever time you allow for something, that's what your work will expand to. So if you're like, I need to write this essay in four hours, and it's 2000 word, it's gonna take four hours. Right. And if you need two hours, it's, it's gonna happen. And I know I tested this shit so many times because when I was at college or at any school that I went or any project, I'm the last minute guy. <laughs> like college, end of session project, Oh, I'm starting at 10 p.m. when it's to give at 8 a.m. in the morning and I'm not oh, sleeping man. all night. And I'm like, eight hour I need to finish. And I come with 36 page, ranked like 95 in the score. And they're like, how the fuck did you do that? I don't know, but I had no choice. That's right. the time I was right. allowed. And I gave my brain that time. So I had no time of self-doubt or anything. Bro, page need to write itself now. And my right. brain was just making it happen. So you can create that kind of emergency for yourself in order to be productive because you know that you only have two hours to do this, then it goes to another meeting or something else. So your, your brain will be like, okay, I need to do this now. Yeah, and it, it's, a, it's super duper effective when yeah. you're just like zoned in, one thing, do nothing yeah. else until you accomplish that. It's over, move on to the next, yeah, that's you know, the next thing. Yeah, so that's like number one thing that I would recommend. Time <laughs> yeah. blocking is everything. That's cool. And um, what was your best investment this year? Like in terms of it can be something material, can be a mentor, it can be whatever, a book, like whatever. 
your best in the I want to be honest with you, my social media manager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was probably like investing in myself, right? Like, mm -hmm. the, you know, that social media is, is another business. Yeah. It's another business. Obviously, everybody wants to know what you're doing. It's a way of marketing yourself and uh, making an impact is it's going worldwide. But, you know, when you're hyper focused and you have an actual business that you run, to add social media to the mix, which Staking is another full-time job, I delegated it out. So that's probably my biggest, best investment. And I'm extremely happy with that because the response is, is amazing. The, the, you know, the pages, all of the social medias are growing. Think about it. You got Facebook, you got Instagram, you got TikTok, you got Twitter. Pinterest, you got Twitter, LinkedIn. you got LinkedIn. Snap. Snap. Snap, right? I didn't even know that. Still Pinterest. exists. Pinterest, and all that. <laughs> yeah, Snapchat is really, really big in the uh, eastern part of the world. So. Okay, so I'm gonna get with the social media manager. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's and, then, like and then snapping. you have the short form content, yeah. the long form content, the picture content, right. the funnel content. Yes. The, oh, bro, it's so like, they manage all that. So all my funnels, yeah. everything. Imagine having to add that to the mix every single yeah. day, right? To show up. And it's getting depressive. I was doing social media for so long. I know everything about it. I could manage people and I just hired a manager yeah. even for myself for content because I'm good at creating it, but the structure and everything, I don't want to spend my whole day focusing on yeah. it. So I'll, I'll tell you what I want. You create the schedule. I'll make it. You edit it. You do everything. You post it for me right. and I'm done. That's and exactly. I'll focus on my genius, which is creating and giving my passion and knowledge and it's an amazing investment yeah, so it's, and it's costing investment. money, but it's like you feel so much better right. from it. And I'm going to continue to invest in myself because that's the, the highest ROI that I have in my entire life as of late has been investing in myself. <clears> and that gives <throat> me the 10x, 100x <laughs> results versus yeah. anything else, you know. And, and when you feel unfocused, what is your go to? No, I have to stop and like, you know, do the breathing techniques or... Uh, meditation, right? And get, kind of get centered. That's awesome. At least, at and least it doesn't need minutes. to be long. It's yeah, like sometimes 10, 10, 10 minutes, 15, yeah. 20, like mm -hmm. depending on how your mind is busy. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's amazing. Is there a question that I didn't ask you that you would love to answer? Oh uh, <laughs> man, no, you asked some really good questions. Uh, I mean, no, I guess what's, what does the future of real estate look like maybe? Something like that. Yeah. Um, so what, what is the future of real estate? Well, markets, real? markets in general. Like I've been so deep into that as well. Like I love cryptocurrency and I love real estate and I'm like uh, what I'm doing like is NFT what they're coming with and stuff yeah more so I, I like decentralized financing uh, I think that that sector is going to be changed forever banking is going to be changed forever yeah. so I really believe in that technology and that um, in, in that uh, uh, economic change and so I, I am investing uh, into cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and then trying to bridge it with real estate at the same time because those are my two passions yeah, uh, and there's massive opportunity for that. So NFT is going to be big. With real NFT, estate. With, of course, if we've uh, in just Florida alone, there's been about three or four properties already sold on as an NFT. Yeah, there's even like soon the future of NFT will be like, let's say that you can't own a full building, let's say a commercial building, they're going to make an NFT of the building and then you'll be able to buy a floor. Right. So then you can rent just your floor if you want. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, you cannot be 20, 30 owner owning the no. building. And if you want to sell the building, it's a whole transaction. A transaction. But now um, you'll be able to just sell your NFT, which is two, three floor, one floor, right. whatever. And then it's going to change the whole game. Now there's going to be way more transaction because instead of having the whole building, you can buy a floor right. and then you can buy another floor and then another floor. So you'll be able to grow instead of, I don't know, a building could be like 50 mil million and then you, dollars, you need yeah. to put five, five, 10 million. I think commercial, I think it's 20%. Yeah, you so 20% like, down. Yeah, so you have to get a, a crap load of money versus 10 just, million. It's yeah, like put insane. a fraction in there and now you're a fractional owner. And if you want to exit, just sell that, you know, that yeah. NFT and, and that's pretty much it. And then selling a, a way smaller portion going to sell like that oh, versus selling a $50 million building. And then you have to ask permission. Hey, because sometimes normally what you do is you build one corporation and you guys all buy at once. So there's 30 investors, you build one corporation and then... Uh, you can purchase the property, right? On an NFT, well, you don't have to talk to all 30 yeah. of the members. Now it's like, I own this NFT, and this is a portion, and I'm I selling that, and I'm gone, right? Like, it's it's super duper easy. So yeah. it's going to change real estate that way. Um, and then just kind of like allowing the 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 growth of uh, cryptocurrency right now. I know everything mm -hmm. looks ugly, but this is where I'm investing the most. I, I invest in the stressful times because the stressful times yeah. create massive opportunities for- yeah. Winter uh, time is the best yeah, time. Yeah, like yeah. while people are going down and while people are, their mindset is not, 
the law of attraction has a number of resource which is unlimited to distribute. Right. So uh, you can just get a bigger pie because a lot of people are focusing on negative thoughts. You're yes. focusing on positive thoughts and you're focusing on attracting the right thing. And let's say, let's say we would be talking, let's say about big, Bitcoin would be the world, 21 million Bitcoin. That's right. the number of abundance. If if we're 7 billion human trying to attract, we can all get pieces and stuff. But if we're only a million people trying to attract, you can get much, much faster. more. And so, so that's where we're at right now. And so yeah. I see great opportunities to uh, be in both uh, asset classes. So I'm really, really excited for the future. But my mindset obviously is a little different. Everybody's looking at the stress mm -hmm. and recession and, uh, and don't listen to the media, guys. Uh, oh, so really bad. think for yourselves really figure out exactly what's going on and mm -hmm. understand that even in these recession depression stages there's always a bounce back guys there's always a bounce back Invest and and, and it's and it's only what you perceive right because i'm not i'm not feeling depression and, yeah. and, and recession. me neither and and it's whatever they tell you like when they were telling you that something was coming and now it's climate change and the next thing and the next thing and you're just making your mind busy with yeah. with useless stuff so Focus on you, focus on becoming better. And um, yeah, man, thanks for your time. Let, tell them where they can find you, your website. If they want to get mentored in real estate and all that good stuff, like where yeah. they can find you. The easiest place would be on um, Instagram. It would be Mr.ACQ. That stands for Mr. Acquisitions. Yeah. Uh, Facebook, Juan Nicasio, AC, uh, Mr. ACQ. TikTok, everything, Mr. ACQ. You Google that. I'll you put the link in, find in, that, yeah. under, under the YouTube. And guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you want the good stuff about real estate, he's the man. So Thank I'll you. see you in another podcast. Appreciate it. Take care, guys.